if you love me, then you will obey my words. Excuse me, sir, I'm not really getting you. That's your claim I don't count. Ah, Mubego. A few weeks ago, I woke up in the morning and God chose to test me. Let me explain. So it was a regular morning. I woke up and did, you know, regular morning things. Water to get my coffee ready. I have searched many years on end. There was none that my soul. I out my journals and set it aside for my quiet time. My soul cries out. I went to my favorite quiet time spot on my balcony. At this time, my church has been, had been doing this midnight prayer thing. So I'd missed the midnight prayers and so I decided to just catch up on it in the morning. Here I am watching and then I feel in my heart, oh, you should give. I'm like, okay, yeah, I have been planning to give anyway, so, okay. And Holy Spirit says, clear out your dollar account. Say what? <laughs> what do you say? Excuse me, sir, I'm not really getting you. That's your claim my dollar account. Ah, bego. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I hear you. I hear you, Papa. I was convinced that this is what the Lord will have me do. Mind you, this is basically all my savings and god was asking me to clear out the account and give everything wait i don't have another savings so are you like maybe what if something does happen we are going to fall back on get me like what's god i'm not really i'm not really getting it but in my heart i said you know what okay i will give it and then me and god proceeded to have a really amazing time i journaled and journaled and journaled because the holy spirit was just saying things to me my hand was just moving and it was just flowing and god just gave me so many words of assurance so many words of you know things that he wants to do his intentions his heart and i felt so much joy love and peace and i've just been pouring like everything for me three pages this morning just from what god is saying to me and I really do believe that I should give it just as a sign of faith, as a sign of God. I'm actually going to partner with you on this journey. He's made me some promises. Um, when the month, I'm going to share, actually, I believe that at the end of the year, I will actually read out this diary. Actually, it's August 1st. So before the year runs out, towards December ending, I'm going to do a video about the promises that God made to me on August first and how he fulfilled it. And God doesn't say anything to not perform it. And I have a part to play. That's another thing, like, when God gives you a word, there's always a part, there's always your part. And you should always ask God, what's my own part? And God has actually told me my part in fulfilling this prophecy. And it is me literally sharing what he's telling me to share. Share the stories I tell you to share. Share the journey I tell you to share. Share everything I tell you to share. Don't hold back. Yeah, I want people to see your life. I want people to see me journeying with you and build you into everything that I said that you are. And I'm not doing it because you are such a good person. I'm not doing it because you're such anything. I'm doing it because this is my destiny. Because before you were born, before you were formed, I knew you. And I called you. That's a whole lot of... Sorry. Before you were born, I knew you. I called you. The prophet to the nation. Every single person. Myself, yourself, you did. Before you were born, God knew you. He already wrote your story. So we're not out here living a life that is just random. We're living an already written story. It blows my mind when your parents marked for the mark of and your physical seed was born the spirit was already born god already knew who you were going to be god chose exactly where you were going to be 
he chose the country you were going to be born in because he knew the makeup of he knew what <laughs> he knew me i'm not leaving random like oh god i'm so grateful honestly i don't know how i got to this place i don't even know what i'm saying but i want you guys to know that on this channel you're probably going to see a lot of very cringy moments that's actually one thing that got this story that i should not feel i should not feel weird about sharing i hope this thing is clear because there's so much wind i should not feel weird about sharing parts of my life that may not be i don't know shareable in a sense you know how for example people say don't cry on camera like if you're crying why are you recording yourself yeah you probably going to see those kind of cringy moments and it's not because i want to show you that i will probably not even show a 100th of the time that i spend with god but when god inspires me to share certain things best believe i'm going to listen because this channel is not about me it's about what god is doing through me not for me but for my generation i'm a special child and so is everybody god god destined you for a reason or for a purpose we're not here randomly we're not on this earth randomly you know? i'm not gonna lie to you i'm struggling with giving this giving that i'm supposed to be giving <laughs> you know that money you have in the back of your head is like okay last last that one's still deep i don't know if i'm going to tell my husband because he might so i think that he'll be worried about like you know at least having a safety net but one thing that god said to me is i am your safety net gtb can clash anything can literally quite happen so your money cannot save you it really can't i am the safety net and something that god has done oh god i just remember the story i'm going to share this i'm going to share this i know there's a story i should tell but my family will be shocked i don't even know if i'm ready but when it's time right now i'll share something that god literally saved me and god has been doing i realized is taking away all the things that i thought i depended on and causing me to depend on him for everything <sighs> it's crazy i had this habit and the reason i had the habit was because i used to struggle with anxiety and i found that it was something that always calmed me down like you know how anxiety feels like your stomach is tight your head is racing racing thoughts you can't focus i would lean on it and it would literally calm me down and then sometimes in june the holy spirit told me it's time to stop because i want you to freely depend on me i want you to depend on me with everything i want you to believe me for everything i want you to trust that i am there for you to lean on in every situation okay god um, you're gonna be the one that is gonna do it because i i can't quite do this thing you're asking me i don't see how because it had become such an in quote important part of my life and when i talk about it you guys will understand what i'm saying it literally took one day i remember i was sitting in this exact spot the day that i agreed with god to stop i surrender and i trust that you're gonna help me and we did since June. Well, sometime in June, I'm gonna remember because I know that I, I wrote it on my journal that day. Journal is so important, to just help you. And from that day until now, quite literally, I don't know how it happened. Quite literally, that thing has completely disappeared from my life. I don't, I didn't think that. I, when I think about it, it still shocks me. Like, God, how do you... There's nothing that God cannot do. There's nothing, quite literally nothing. I won't struggle with intense anxiety. I don't have that anymore. I can't remember the last time I was so literally anxious. I thank God. Anyways, this whole story started with me being clearing my car balance. Because God asked me to. Earlier this month, actually, God asked me to show up. I personally didn't have the money, but my business did, and I just kept thinking, like, God, I don't want to use my business money for personal things. And then God said to me, bruh, it's, it's not your business, it's mine, it's my money, I gave you the money, so you're gonna sell it. <laughs> and so, I gave that. Um, again, sometime this month, he asked me to give another amount of money in dollars. I gave it. And now he's asking me to clear the entire account. And people like, I don't understand what's going on, sir, sir. But, we'll see. I'll tell you how that goes. I'm gonna just open my GTV account and just stare at the money that is about to leave. I've also been like, God, I don't want to give because I'm expecting you to give me something in return. I just want to give because you asked me to give. So quiet time ends. I go about my day. Funny enough, you know, that whole day, I was just full of so much joy. I was just excited. It was as if, I don't know, in my heart, I'd already given it. And I was just so, so, so excited. 
you think somebody dashed me twenty thousand dollars or something you'll not know that i was just about to lose all my life savings quite literally all my savings <laughs> that's what i'm wearing today besides wear sneakers surviving it i bought this shirt for uche actually but it turns out it's too big for him and he really doesn't like oversized clothes so it has become my own now when i got home it was at this point that you know like the voice of in quote reason started to suggest things devil this is your savings though you don't have another one like what exactly what if something happens tomorrow what where do you want to get money from this this is your savings this is what you fall back on ah, how do you want to do that then i started asking myself okay should i tell my husband you know just so that he's aware that you know i don't have savings anymore so many stupid suggestions of you know things that will make me delay giving it started coming up and then i realized at this point that this is not this is not god this is definitely the, the devil whispering things in my ear and trying to get me to not obey the instruction that i had received and i was very convicted and convinced that this was this is what god will have me do at this time so you know what i zapped up i went and i gave it you know what i'm saying i gave it there are two different scriptures about giving there's one that it's about you know those that sow in weeping shall reap a oh my god i can't remember the scripture right now but i'll put it up but i know that there's a there's a sowing that is like when you're weeping it's almost like you're giving everything that, that you have and you're giving it and then there's a scripture that says god loves a cheerful prompt to do its giver whose heart is in his giving so for me in that moment i feel like it was a mix of both because i was full of joy i was like god i've never given this much in my life at once it's like god is faithful that's just the truth god is faithful and satan is, is is always going to try to negate the instructions of god in your life so like just being able to discern let me tell you a few things that point out satan is very sensible number one like he makes sense sense in a logical way he makes sense like when he's giving you his own points it's gonna make logical sense and the thing about god a lot of times god is not going to ask you to do anything that is convenient or comfortable or even sensible like some of his instructions do not make sense like when david was going to kill goliath who would have thunk that the strategy was use a sling and a stone like that doesn't literally doesn't make sense the ways of god are not the ways of man satan makes a lot of sense you know he's very convincing he's very sensible he's very logical he's very smart number two is satan is gonna ask you to do things that are beneficial to yourself that's the thing he's gonna want you to glorify yourself and do what is good for you and your flesh and what is comfortable god does the opposite so why am i sharing this story I believe I'm meant to share it because we are in a time when God is awakening his bride, his end time army. People who he's going to be able to use in this time to do the mighty works that he will do. Um, the Bible says that God is coming back for a church that is spotless. And if you look around, I don't think that the church is looking really spotless right now. But God is going to do a work and he needs his soldiers, he needs people who he's going to say, do this and they will just obey no questions asked and it's not to say that god doesn't welcome your questions god actually encourages you to ask but that you're asking doesn't mean that he's going to give you full-on explanation about what is really going on and why he's asking you to do certain things god needs people who are just going to listen to him and trust you know if you say you love god the bible says that if you love me then you will obey my words if you love me then you obey my commandments that is what god is demanding from me and from you in this season as a christian who is working with god your obedience is paramount your obedience is key god will not tempt you but god will test you the work with god is full of tests it's full of tests that you have to pass and the reward for passing a test is more tests you know higher tests than greater tests so they're not temptations there's a difference between tests and temptations you know temptations are, are there for you to fall into sin literally the satan setting trap for you so that you will fall but you know, tests will just reveal the state of your heart towards God. And most of the time, God is not testing you for himself because he already knows the state of your heart. He's testing you for you so that you can see the state of your heart and, you know, align yourself arise with God. And the thing is, God is going to test you across different areas of your life. The thing here is that he wants us to come to a place where we are in total surrender 
Maybe you're in total obedience with every area of your life. I may have passed this test when it comes to money or, you know, giving. But God could test me a different area that has to do with maybe my relationship with my husband. There can be a situation where God wants me to respond in humility and I respond with pride. But the thing is, God is going to keep pruning you. It's like, it's like a spiritual school. God will keep telling you, do this, tweaking you and pruning you and schooling you and telling you, no, this is how you do it. When you fail a test, it doesn't matter. It's a lesson for you to learn and there will be another test again where you are able to go through and pass. The whole point of all this is so that Christ will be formed in us, so that we can become people who are really actual representatives of God. So that when we go into the world, people will not just see us, they'll be seeing Christ in us because through these many schoolings and through these many tests and trials, God is perfecting us, is perfecting our character, is perfecting our person, is perfecting who you are. James chapter 1 verse 2, from verse 2, it says, Count it all joy when you go through diverse trials, because the testing of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have its full work, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. God can only use a man who is obedient, God will use a vessel who trusts him, God will use somebody whose heart is aligned to him, who is willing to do what he asks him to do, even when it doesn't make sense. And a lot of times, we want to have clarity and we want to know, okay, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing, because I mean, we are human beings and we just want it to make sense. There is that place of mystery and that is the thing that actually proves that we have faith. Because if you have a full-on picture of everything, then where is the place for faith? The fact that it doesn't really make sense, I'm not really understanding what is going on here, but I'm going to obey God regardless. That is the proof of your actual trust and obedience towards God. I say that the real test of obedience is when things don't make sense, when it's a mystery and you still go ahead and obey God. Through every area of your life, God is going to test you. God is going to test your obedience. God is going to test your trust in Him through every part of your life. You know, because God really does want to be involved in every part of our life. It, our relationship with God is not only focused on the spiritual aspect of our lives. It's focused on our business. It's focused on our relationships. It's focused in every part of our lives. Because the goal is not for us to just be people who are spiritual when it comes to spiritual things. Is that... The excellence of God, the wisdom of God, the person of God shows up in every aspect of our lives, in the dealings of our business, in the way that we relate to other people, in the way that we show up in the world, in the way that we treat other people. You know, it's for us to go into the world and be a light, be a representative of Jesus, be a representative of the kingdom of God in this world. This is what the world needs. The world is looking for answers. The, Lord, the world is looking for solutions. And everything that is required, everything that the world needs, is inside Jesus Christ. But he cannot use a vessel who cannot trust him. He cannot use a vessel who is not willing to be foolish or look foolish to the world. He cannot use somebody who will not trust him like a mumu. God wants you to trust him like a mumu. We really must come into a place of surrender where we are willing to, you know, just surrender every part of our lives and realize that, you know, me and you, we're nothing without God. I am nothing without God. Everything that I am, everything that I know, everything, everything that I think that I know is because of God. My existence is because of God. Everything that I have is because of God. Everything that I represent is because of God. All I am, all I will ever be in this life is because of God. That knowledge brings you to a place of just humility and knowing that like this God loved me enough and said, you know, I'm going to put my very spirit inside this vessel and I'm going to form this person into somebody who is just like me that I can use on this earth to reign and I'm going to make a king on this earth to reign. The Bible says that Daniel was distinguished among the, among his peers. There was an excellent spirit in him. I was struck not just by the wisdom of Daniel, but the humility of his heart. His life was basically a life of, the, of obedience. He was in the world, but he maintained his life of not being of the world. And here is the thing that I've discovered. The more that you know God, the more that you can trust him. I'll give you an example. I have a friend who is very forex savvy, you know, like he's always calling trades and he's always sharing them. And I can see that his results are working because he shared testimonials of, you know, how people follow the things that he's saying and they are getting results. And I know that he's good as well at what he's doing. I know this, I've seen it, I've experienced it. And so 
if this person comes to me and says oh i think that you should do this particular trade i think that you should buy this i'm going to trust this word for it and i'm going to and i'm going to go ahead and obey it's the same thing with god when you come to know who he is that he's a faithful god that he's a god that cares for you and loves you and he's on your side when you come to know the faithfulness of god then trusting him will become easier and easier but then the knowledge of god is going to come by you experiencing him for yourself you seeing him for yourself you having a revelation of him for yourself it's not something that anybody is going to tell you and then you just take it no you have to experience it and see for yourself that this god is faithful that this god is good and how is that gonna happen faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god this word of God we're talking about here is Rema, the word come alive, not just the word where you are reading the Bible and it's just like words that are just, you know, flowing like you're just reading stories. The word is going to come alive to you and it's going to be a revelation to you, it's going to become Rema to you, living and active to you. And this is something that the Holy Spirit will do, but you have to give yourself to him to be able to do it. You have to say, okay, Holy Spirit, I want to know God. I want you to open my eyes. I want you to show me yourself i want you to reveal yourself to me in a way that i've never known before because he's willing he's very ready i believe that if you continue to spend time with god if you continue to show up in that place of intimacy in that place of prayer in that place of worship in that place of studying the word he's going to show himself to you in a way that you will never forget in a way that is unchangeable you will see him and you cannot be able to unsee him you will know him in a way that you will not be able to unknow him if you just give him your time and if you just give him room to show himself to you, room to reveal himself to you because he's more than ready to show you him in a way that you have never known before. God wants to partner with me and you to bring his kingdom to come on this earth as it is in heaven. This is the desire of the Lord for us in this time. I know that the world is really, really moving mad. You know, there is an as it is in heaven. And the job of me and you is to make it happen on earth as it is in heaven. God cannot come down and do anything by himself. But God will use men who are willing, who are obedient, who trust him, and who will carry out his instructions per time, his leading per time, the little nudgings per time, the little things he tells you to do per time. Can God trust you? The Bible is full of stories of many men who trusted God. And God transformed not just their lives but entire nations because of them god birthed entire nations through them god delivered entire nations through them think of abraham a whole nation came out of one man think of moses who delivered an entire nation think of david an entire dynasty just because he could trust and he could obey god spend time with god he wants to spend time with you trust me like the more you spend time with somebody the more you know them the more you love them the more you can obey them that's just it he's trustworthy he's faithful he never fails he watches his word to perform it he's on your side this is the god that i serve this is the god that is calling you into obedience to it's calling you to conform your life to his will, to conform your will to his will, to conform your ways to his ways, to learn his ways and to follow him. Thank you for watching. My name is Adez Elmi. I'm an entrepreneur and a content creator in Lagos, Nigeria. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, this is a good time to subscribe and watch more videos. Enjoy!